So access to vaccines is a big challenge, and it is a major challenge in the developing world. But not only there. I grew up in a town called Pasadumkeg, Maine, which is a very long way from anything that resembles a city. It was a remote part of the United States. So we had to travel a long ways to get something like a flu shot. So this is a big problem, but it becomes a bigger problem, um, especially the further away you get um, from urban centers. The cold chain exists, and it exists to preserve vaccines as you ship them around the world. Because our manufacturing at the moment is done in a few select central locations, this creates a major distribution challenge. We have to manufacture vaccines in one place and then ship them around the world at immense cost. In fact, today, up to 80% of the cost of vaccinating a single person is due to this cold storage, so the cold chain. The reason the cold chain is very important is because it's our only mechanism of that distribution. We have to keep the vaccine safe and effective from the point of manufacturing all the way to the point of care. Now, the reason the cold chain is necessary is because vaccines have enemies, heat and water. We have to keep the vaccines cold in order that their structure and therefore their efficacy isn't destroyed when they become warm. We also have to deal with water. Water is a major problem with vaccines. We store vaccines in water because it's the natural media that exists for storing things like proteins. Unfortunately, water's structure is not independent of its temperature. And so over time, water's structure will change. And there's a rather radical example to make you think about this. If you heat water enough, it will eventually boil. But not everything does this. For example, salts don't boil. And so we had to think about how we could replace water with salts. And this idea actually came from work on biofuels at Imperial College, oddly enough. So we found that we could stabilize the proteins used in biofuel production at extremely high temperatures. And the salts that we use to do this are called ionic liquids. And that's because they're liquids at any temperature, even when they're very dry. Now, it sounds really simple to use salts, but you can't use just any salts. So ordinary table salt basically has no effect on stabilizing vaccines. So we had to think about developing brand new salts. And so we had to design these new molecules. So we had to do a lot of very complicated chemistry, and we had to think about how that chemistry would impact the structure of the active elements in vaccines. And since I've now decided to move from working on biofuels to working on vaccines, we had to think about a few extra things, such as people. So we don't normally eat and drink biofuels. At some receptions, you might get some bioethanol. But we do tend to inject vaccines into people. And so we had to start thinking about making sure that anything we added to the vaccine formulation would keep it safe for human use. So the task in front of us was quite obvious and straightforward, right? All we need to do is design a safe, non-toxic, brand new molecule that will keep all of these vaccine structures you know, in a stable configuration at any temperature and not poison anybody. So we developed our new chemistry and, and set about, and we discovered that we needed to involve a lot of complexity. So we needed a very complex set of molecules in order to do this because the vaccine's active elements are large, complex structures. So proteins or DNA or RNA. And so they need a lot of complex interactions in order to keep them safe. We need complexity. We also need affordability. So we don't want them to cost too much. And we also need them to be non-toxic. So we've got this big, long list, right? They need to be simple, but they also need to be flexible. They need to be safe, but they also need to be affordable. And so we had to sort of develop elements of science and engineering and medicine and put them together to make it happen. And it is a success story, so it does work. So we have some protein formulations that are stable at room temperature on the shelf basically forever. Now we have to start thinking about regulation. So how can we get these things into the marketplace? Regulatory frameworks are there to protect people from mad scientists. So it's an, it's an important thing. And so our strategy was to think about things that are generally regarded as safe for human use. So we looked at food and some of the molecules that exist in food. So we take some bits of food molecules here and there, and we stir them all together in a big pot, add a little bit of vinegar. There you go, brand new salt. And you know, chemistry is not magic, but it is kind of how it works. And once we've gotten past sort of these regulatory issues, the next step will be to start thinking about manufacturing. So how will we scale these things up? How will we be able to take this new set of molecules, a generic platform that we intend to be using on a large variety of vaccines, and then put them into people? And so we need a lot of partnerships and a lot of help with that with companies and government agencies. The vision is still intact. So what I have in mind is that we will be able to store vaccines on any shelf, in any hospital, in any doctor's office, anywhere in the world for very long periods of time, decades. 
So we want to increase the affordability and the accessibility of vaccines everywhere in the world so you don't always have to go to a big hospital in order to get your shots. Thank you.